so low tide. Low tide, are you worried? Yeah, very. Cassandra was worried about the breakover angle. David just bat curiosity out of the spot. Definitely worried about the bike rack. Oof. Whoa, 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 whoa! Uh-uh. Because of extreme low tide, our jacks are hitting by about an inch. So, I can't get off the bridge. <laughs> well, they brought some dunnage out to help with the break-even point. Because it's at such an angle, they're going to raise the bridge up with me on it. That should allow me to get over the, uh, the break-over angle here. Made it. <laughs> oh, you're using bees like crazy this morning. I'm so hot. I've got so many hot flashes. That was so nice of them to. <laughs> yes, <laughs> pull the boards out and yeah, level us up. Level everything out. Let's head on to Let's the go. campground. So you want me to follow you? Yeah, I got to plug in the coordinates first. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't done that yet because GPS wouldn't pick up because. I was inside the hole of a ship. Well, there you have it. Everything there is to know about Wrangell. It's really nice that they have the signs. We are headed to the campground, I think. I didn't really tell Sandra that there's only about like 10 or 12 uh, spots at this campground. So we'll see. And we'll see what kind of a campground it is. I don't. I don't know, it's supposed to be a harbor around here, but I don't really see anything just yet. It is 6.30 in the morning and not much traffic on the road. Now, I've passed or met three cars. They've all been pickup trucks. Uh, actually, diesel is 502. Man, that's cheaper than Haynes. Uh, I passed now four people on the road. Everyone has waved at me. So, this might be just about the friendliest <laughs> Alaskan town I've ever seen. There's a sign that said City of RV Park next right. City of Wrangell RV Park next right. So, all right, that's encouraging. Let's see if uh, there's room. You have arrived at your destination on the right. Okay. All right. So we're going in the wrong way, but that's where they told us to go. And it looks like there's sights. Well, <laughs> this is the campground. They have, I think, 15 or 30 amp service. We think these are back in sights. Not sure. So David's going to try and back into this site. But David's got this nifty little checker. I guess green means good? Yeah. All right. Green is good. So coming into Wrangell, <laughs> I had mentioned that everyone was waving at me and that it's probably the friendliest town in Alaska. Yeah. So on the first day, yeah. yesterday, a gentleman came by and invited us to a weekly potluck. Friday night potluck. That's right. Up at uh, the point uh, in the National Forest, and they've got like a shelter and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, this morning, a nice couple came by, and they invited us as well. Yeah. Didn't know that he invited us, uh, Jim, and uh, they were... Um, 
Bruce and Susan. Yeah, and, and they were really nice, and yeah. so they uh, invited us along. So that's where we're going. Mm -hmm. Sandra made a... I actually um, had time to make something for this potluck. Yeah, potato salad, and we got our plates and chairs in the Jeep. So we're going to head on and have a little potluck tonight. Yeah. Wrangell is definitely known for their deers, and it's hunting season. It's around Wrangell. Yeah, this view is okay. A little bit of a walk. This view might be worth it. Here we are. All right. We thought 10 people. Yeah, we're guessing 10. Oops. Oh my. Man. It looks like a little more than yeah. 10. All right, we're going to take a little bike ride into Wrangell. Beautiful day. I'm going to check it out. So one of the things that Wrangell is known for is totems. And there's Tinglet Nation, and there's supposed to be 12 of them town. here in uh, Wrangell. So, Sandra, she uh, wants to take pictures of all 12 of the totems. In our quest for totems, we have found Totem Park in Wrangell. Well, Wrangell being an island, it is centered around harbors. I think there's like three of them. Mm-hmm in a town, a community of 2,000. And behind us, we were looking for totems, but also uh, Chief Shake's Longhouse. I love the way Wrangell is embracing the Tlingit culture. And um, it's, it's really cool. Really it's neat. It's been a lot of fun exploring the area. Yeah. The yeah. town. On our bikes. On our bikes. Very bike accessible. It is, and it, yeah, sometimes the bikes are the best way to explore. So normally a very quiet, sleepy downtown by the uh, docks here. But when the cruise ships are in town, it comes alive. Tour operators, restaurants are open. It is a completely different town when you got a big boat here. Well, actually, they're not too big of boats. They're more the expedition class. So in Wrangell, they've got a state historic site. It's called Petroglyph Beach. There is a catch to this viewing of the petroglyphs, which is extremely unique. And that is, at high tide, they're underwater. The only way to get to them and to see them, unless you're going to scuba dive, snorkel, is to view it at low tide. We're going to see what which ones are visible and not covered by water. But you have to be very careful because they don't want you to step on them because uh, they are uh, historic pieces. My question though, is that being from Hawaii, they have petroglyphs in Hawaii. Obviously there's petroglyphs here in Alaska, thousands of miles from Hawaii, and these date thousands of years ago. These guys aren't like jumping on planes and communicating with one another. We saw petroglyphs in Utah. There's petroglyphs, the Indians, Mayans were doing it. So how do these guys, and all these symbols are similar. How do they do that? How do they know? Questions. I don't know if I can answer. Not real obvious and plentiful, but you can see Something right there might be a petroglyph as well. So 
one of the things that we discover looking at petroglyphs is this is one of those times you want to look at it through a camera because the contrast of the camera seems to really accentuate the shape. you can hear it but the lapping of the water and the movement of the water right there that's the tide flowing in well not the sandiest of beaches no how is the water here oh man this is nice are you serious i'm i'm thinking that on a an 85 degree <laughs> day would be actually nice hmm yeah, this is the warmest natural flowing water in Alaska that I have felt that didn't come from the center of the earth. <laughs> okay, then now that explains why we saw some people swimming yesterday. Yeah, I get it now. Okay, well, they're not crazy after all. No. So searching for these petroglyphs that you can only find at low tide here reminds us of... There's another time. A place in California. Yeah that we went to that you could only get to this lighthouse at low tide. Mm -hmm. And you had to really time it because there was like a, about a two or three hour yeah. window. And that tide would come out, you could walk to the lighthouse. Really it neat. Was big waves too. Yeah. So once you're stuck on the lighthouse, that's it. That's it, man. You're, you're getting really wet if you're trying to get back into yeah. shore. the Mount Dewey trailhead and it goes all the way up through this rainforest and supposedly there's a really nice view of the harbor. I can't exactly say yay, we found the trailhead. You round the corner on this trail which is really nice and you are given this kind of a view with the trees heading up to the top of Mount Dew. So this trail is more of a boardwalk because it is steep. I mean, really steep. But this kind of reminds me a little bit of like uh, The Hobbit. Oh, wow. Wow. Man. Yeah. Okay, this is cool. about six o'clock in the morning and I feel like I'm always packing something for somewhere. We're gearing up for a little excursion to see some bears. Yeah, it's time. So the downtown area by the harbor looks a lot different this morning. Now granted than it did yesterday with the cruise ship and now granted 
it's 6 30 or 6 35 in the morning so that has some bearing on the fact that there's nobody here but sandra's here bright-eyed and bushy-tailed i don't know if i go that far <laughs> and maybe this is our boat said like three feet oh my goodness so we're two hours before extreme low tide <laughs> hey, if i get stuck on this island i'm okay with that. <laughs> that's true with the bears so we're gonna follow another uh, so tour boat up the creek and hopefully we won't be up the creek without a paddle uh, we'll uh, get to the landing spot at the creek We'll disembark quickly and that way they can pull the boat out for us. Here we go. Perfect. Then if you go up the rock steps and to your left there will be some flat rocks where you guys can change your shoes. It is soft sand and lots of seaweed here. What a whack. Yeah. This is where the water comes. We're getting to the trailhead at Ann Ann Bear Observatory. And there goes our boat. All right, so we're waiting in line to get our briefing from the ranger here at Ann Ann. Mm -hmm. And you getting excited? I am. <laughs> so the preview, all the eagles over on the um, shore there. Yes. And I don't really see the salmon coming in. Oh, oh yeah. Yep. Well, there goes some there's, salmon. There's some salmon right there. So, yeah. This creek right here is where they're coming up and heading that way. And that's where we're going is that way. Wow. Hopefully that's where the bears are. Yeah, so we have about a half mile hike okay, guys, once we'll we get our up tour. Way. Yep, and they give us a briefing, and that's where we're going now. <laughs> John's going to stop because the ranger is going to make sure that there are no bears walking up from the creek up anywhere. We are on the trail to uh, Ann Ann Observatory. Wow. Well, Fishing hole. Yeah. Wow. So that's just a little bit of fish. Yeah. So the rangers check around and they give us the go ahead to make our way to the observation deck. And you look around, and make sure there's no bears around. Yeah, a lot of scat. You want to watch your step. Still there. Morning. trail that we just walked up to get to the observation deck.
So there is a sign-up sheet and there is a bare blind uh, that gets you down really close to the water. So uh, we signed up for 10 o'clock and that's what time it is. So we're going to head on down to the blind. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, oh, yeah, time. let's go. <laughs> this is obviously Sandra's favorite part. Oh yeah, we got to do our inside library voices right now. This is what's known in bear viewing as shift change. like after tur after Thanksgiving dinner Day is complete. <laughs> Just right. Heading back to the boat from Ann Ann Observatory. Sandra's camera is really heavy. What? <laughs> it's like about a thousand pictures or something. So I uh, got to 999 and then my camera started a new file. So now <laughs> we're. Uh, I didn't see what the new file size is. <laughs> So you can see that gap's completely gone. Once again. Yeah. It's all filled in with water. Look at that uh, tide flowing in, man. All right, time to load us back for the hour trip to Wrangell. We made it.
laws of hiking. What goes down must go up. <laughs> so we met some other uh, cruise shippers. Yeah, that were coming down the trail. Mm -hmm. We were going up mm -hmm. and asked how they were doing and all the pleasantries. And they said, it's really nice. There is a cool water, water feature, feature to the right. So we take the right trail. Um, yep. And he said something about a bog area. Yeah, it's a found cool it. water feature in a bog. It's kind of neat being in an open bog meadow like this in the middle yeah. of the forest so that's kind of neat. right the rainforest the alaskan that's rainforest true. and the ground is very very squishy great to walk on yeah not so great to swim in no we made it to the top of the falls of course david has to be the rebel <laughs> and not go down the stairs <laughs> But Are there we, stairs? Yeah, there's stairs. Oh, I must and have then, taken the wrong turn it so out we're wondering if the gentleman that told us about the water feature to the right, not to the right trail, yeah. is this. But there is a trail. There is. It's a social trail. Yeah. I think you need to go socialize and be social. You want me to take your backpack, David? No, I got it. I may need it for survival. Okay. Well, then, no, you'll need mine then. <laughs> That's true. It's like Field of Dreams when they just disappear in the cornfield. David just disappeared in the forest. This is the water feature that that gentleman was talking about. All right, it's pretty cool. Well, the Hawaiian just couldn't help himself. He's in a rainforest next to a waterfall. The weird part is it's in Alaska. <laughs> in Alaska. And we're what? Less than a mile from our campsite? <laughs> yeah, less than uh, about six tenths of a mile from the campsite. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's cold. It's really cold. As cold as the Arctic Ocean? No, no, not anywhere near as cold as the Arctic or as cold as the uh, glacier. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is cold, but feels kind of good for about the next five seconds. Sandra pretending to be an Alaskan as she is foraging for wild blueberries next to Rainbow Falls Stream. This is called Devil's Club, and there's a reason for it, because it'll give you a one-two punch underneath the leaves are these really nasty spiky things, and those spiky things continue along. A lot of times people have a tendency to want to grab them, but you don't, and they look nice and soft on top, but again, underneath is really, really nasty stuff. On the trail up from the waterfalls, which was really nice, uh -huh. and uh, Sandra foraging for blueberries, we found this bush that oh, was yeah. just full Spider. of them. Pretty nice setting for picking blueberries. Yes, look at that. Wow. So, I'm excited. I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet, but I'll... <laughs> I've got a half a mile to figure it out. So fresh blueberries picked in, right a rainforest. in the rainforest right next to the creek that goes into Rainbow Falls. In Alaska. In Alaska. Man, I don't know if it gets much more cool than that. This is so cool. I love it. <laughs> well, normally 
Sandra is way too cheap to be buying crab in the store. I am. Thank goodness that the crab fairy knocked on our door last night, got some really gorgeous, nice. And they went ahead and cooked it. And let me tell you, it is cooked perfectly. This is um, local Dungeness. Did I say that right? Yes, Dungeness, Dungeness crab. crab out of the Alaskan waters. So they, they caught it yesterday and then they cooked it last night and then they brought it to us and it was still warm. Wow, and it's yeah. so tender. Some of the town people that we have met here in Wrangell they in our amazing. stay uh, is just unbelievably friendly and really nice. They uh, came by and, and we were talking with them and, and they said, well, we've got you know some extra crab we just don't know what to do with. Oh, gee. <laughs> Would you guys be interested? We're like, oh, yeah. gee, hmm, Alaskan fresh crab. Yeah, okay. All right, so this is a very weird feeling right now. We're leaving everything, everything. behind us. <laughs> We're moving forward, folks. This is the first time that we have been at a campground. Mm -hmm. uh, we're at a really nice one here in Wrangell, yeah. right on the water. Mm -hmm. And we're leaving to dump and fill. And this is electric only. Yeah, and we're going to be here for about another five or six days. So we're leaving the campsite to dump and fill, but we're coming back. Yeah. We've both walked around this thing like three or four times just to make sure that everything is unplugged. This is just how unsettling. I think it would almost be easier just to completely pack up as if we're leaving permanently. <laughs> but I, I just, so I don't touched. like half doing things because you just get out of your routine. Yeah, you do. You know, I think this is the first time that we've dumped at a uh, marina as well. <laughs> well, that would make sense since we're an RV. <laughs> this is kind of cool. Look at all these berries. So while David is dumping, I'm going to start collecting some of these berries. All right, well, David is bleaching this because there's not a sign that specifically says potable water. So David called the City Works Waterworks Company, and yep. they said this is city water. This is direct from city water. It's perfectly good, and their concern isn't the water quality. Their concern is what do people connect to this faucet? So we're going to let that bleach set and then David's going to turn the rig around and then we'll let it run for about a minute to flush it all out and then we'll fill. Another day, another adventure in southeast Alaska. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a glacier tour. We're not sure about this one. Yeah, because is it one of those, have you seen one glacier, you've seen them all? Yeah, so this was sort of our second or third choice. It's a long story, but so we're gonna we're gonna see how it goes. Yeah. I wasn't really looking forward to it because we had been to glaciers. Yeah, and originally you had booked two Ann Ann yes. bear trips, but we had just a perfect time that it, it we was couldn't, gorgeous. Couldn't do it again. Yeah, we yeah, we duplicated. We didn't want to go back to Ann Ann because our first time yeah. was just perfect. So. I called the company and I told them that and they said, well, we've got another glacier tour. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, what about the Stikine River? And they said, well, no, we're not, we don't do that. not during the time that you're going to be here. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So we jumped on the boat and headed to the Conte Glacier. Yeah. Seen one glacier, you've seen them all. Yeah, that's what we were kind of thinking. So on the boat out there, it was actually really cool. We were a little disappointed because it wasn't sunny. It's cloudy, but as we're going out there, the clouds were enveloping the mountains. Yeah. It was really cool. I mean, there was some really neat uh, formations yeah. of the clouds and... Kind of surrounding and blanketing the different islands around and the vegetation. It was really cool. Yeah, yeah, and it was going in and out of a few of these little valleys and mountain peaks. And that was sort of setting the stage. We didn't realize it, but it was kind of setting the stage <laughs> for the tour. Yeah. And then as we got closer, we started seeing something that we really haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. And that was icebergs. No, glassbergs. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, these were 
literally yeah. well, we've, glass birds. And, and we've seen icebergs. I mean, on just about any glacier tour you take, you're going to see icebergs because of the calving. But what made these special is that these turned over. So you didn't see the top of the iceberg, you saw the underneath, which meant all that snow and frost was melted away and you saw the pure ice and it looked like glass like someone like a sculpture yes. or something had just like hand blown this glass or, or yep. made it was just and gone out there and carved yeah, these figures and, and the the colors were just so blue and so vibrant and so clear some of them oh. you can see right through the iceberg sections of it and yeah. it was just it was amazing it was incredible yeah we had never seen mm. anything like that before we kept seeing more and more of yeah. them some got pretty big. Huge. <laughs> Man. And some neat designs. But yeah. then as we turned the corner, mm -hmm. we got to the glacier. Mm -hmm. And everyone says, oh, it's going to be pretty active calving. It's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. We've heard that before. Yeah. It, it was calving. I mean, we it saw was. a big calf. Just this as we were approaching. In. Yeah. yeah. Funny thing is with Lacan is that it's not, you know, like usually you see this glacier and it's this big wall. Mm -hmm. And this one kind of tapered down a little bit. And, yeah. Um, and it had almost like spires or spikes yeah. and such, which I yeah. guess aided in the calving. Right. But then we got closer to it mm -hmm. and we were in a smaller boat, which was really good because there was some ice fields yeah. uh, right in front of it. So we kind of maneuvered around and the, well, the first time we got right up to the first yeah. ice field. And Lindsay said, you know, hey, this is a welded boat, not a riveted boat. And <laughs> don't be alarmed when I start ramming into some of the icebergs and going boom, 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 boom. And she did, she was right. Oh yeah, went right through them. Yeah. I have not seen a seal on a uh, an iceberg, and yeah. there were just tons oh, of them, tons and of all them. the little baby seals too. So I finally got my seal picture on the iceberg. Yeah, and it looks really, really good. Yeah, but so. there were so many seals on these icebergs. Mm -hmm. Wow! Wow! It was calving. It was active. Yeah. It was amazing, and yeah. the colors. The colors were incredible. some very unique sounds yeah, out there. So that was, was cool. that was different too. Yeah, yeah, that was really neat. Mm -hmm. This tour that we went into with not a huge yeah. high expectation. Wow. Seal, seal, oh. right there, right there. Oh, that little bastard. <laughs> get him, get him. Come on, look at him. There you go. Our stop in Petersburg, Alaska, here at the harbor. We were told 90% of their economy is fishing. 
for such a small little town. This is a big harbor. Smells like fish. They're processing it right there. It's sort of set in this little bay here, very protected. For a town that is centered around the fishing and maritime industry, Sons of Norway here, and they've got a memorial for the mariners out there. Little uh, hour stop in Petersburg, mm -hmm. a connection to Norway. Yes. And kind of scenic. Yes, very scenic. All the architecture is really cool. Oh, yeah. Really neat. And then, of course, the harbor is just incredible. $38 million dollars worth of fish here. Wow, yeah. a lot of fish. And it smells it, too. Oh, does it? It does. <laughs> We're on our way back to the boat. We need to go this way. Why? Just for the halibut of it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, so we really enjoyed this tour. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Uh -huh. Turned out to be probably one of our more I favorite think, ones. I think it was my favorite glacier tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah just by neat. Far. And getting out there was just unbelievable. Yeah. So, uh, neat experience. Mm -hmm. off to the dock. Well, we're all checked in. Apparently they knew we were coming and they called ahead at the boat to make sure that the boat knew we were coming and apparently yeah. everybody knew we were coming. Yep. They uh, also had the ramps ready just in case <laughs> we're, because I remembered that we're too low. Yeah. So they had the ramps ready for us just in case uh -huh. we need to kind of bump up for yeah. the jack. So, yeah. so the terminal they were prepared. manager, he remembered and he said, okay, we're ready for you this time. Faithful, he'll always lift you up. I was looking for.